Yo, stop letting these people trick y'all, man. For training programs, meal plans, and coaching, make sure you check out khbfitnessandtraining.com. What's going on, my fitness seekers all over the world? KHB Fitness here with another video for you. I wanted to do a reaction video for you guys today showing you a two-year transformation of a young man who goes by JB Smooth 23 I tried to find him on YouTube, but maybe that's a TikTok video, which is more than likely what it is. And that's for the younger folks. Even though I'm on there, I'll be trying to be hip. It is what it is. But I came across this channel when I was scrolling through like a mindless zombie just to see if I could find some more fitness content for you guys. Because I like to do those reaction videos too. And what he has in this video is probably one of the most realistic transformations that I have seen. Now as someone as myself who's typically a mesomorph is what they say, I have a lot of growth potential, but I know what it is to look like an ectomorph as you can see on this picture here. I was about 5'11", about 165 pounds until I grew up to about six foot one, six two, somewhere between that height. But if anybody asks, I'm definitely six foot two, maybe six foot two on some inches, right? Right? But it's important, and I like these videos too, because seeing this from a natural lifter is very important to see versus someone who has had help. I did a short video about this too when it came to the young man who actually had help and he competed, and he was saying how he'd like to be natural now. But once you go, you're not natural anymore because of your growth potential. It's forever there. And I talk about that in that video. Maybe I'll reference that too. But this is probably one of the most realistic ones I've seen and I really like it. And I want to break it down for you, go through it step by step. As you know, I'm an advocate for natural lifting. I'm 38, about to be 39 this year. And I don't mind needles, but what's in that needle? I think it's the best way to go because you get to see what you're capable of. And not just that, you're not doing it for anybody else in particular, except for yourself. When you start going through competitions, that's a whole nother story. But is it worth the situation that can come up on that? Not on my watch. Things like testosterone replacement and such, that's a different thing because that'll up to your natural levels. But when you start going above that, it gets tricky. But anyway, I ran it enough, man. Let's go ahead and get into this video. But before we start, you know what I want from you. Oh yeah, you know what I want. Go ahead and hit that like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, make it your favorite video, and let's get on into it. I'm about to give you a realistic two-year transformation as an ectomorph. This is before I started lifting weights. So first off, he's doing this as an ectomorph, he says. And if you don't know what an ectomorph, mesomorph, and an endomorph is, what they are is actually the spectrum of where we sit in this. Now, some people say, oh, that's a false thing, but you can see it, man. As somebody who's experienced it myself, when you're on the skinnier side of things or the bigger side of things, you have to do things differently. When you're in the middle, you have a little bit more grace. You can do all kinds of snacking and stuff in between and still build up a pretty good frame, but you don't have that. If you're slacking or going underneath your calories on the, the side of things, whether it being an ectomorph versus an endomorph, you're gonna be losing those gains that you could definitely be getting. And as you're an endomorph, you gotta try a little harder, watch what you eat, be very cautious of such, but you also get the benefit of mass. But when you're an ectomorph, you get the benefit of staying slim and getting away with a lot more cheap meals, things of that nature. But it makes up for no health on that particular. So make sure you're eating healthy. And if you're bulking up and all of that, or getting a surplus is what I like to call it, main gaining as Greg Doucette likes to call it, make sure that you're eating the healthiest things you can. I was 135 to 145 pounds at 6'1". Man, this young man was even thinner than I thought he was. I was 165, so I told you right there, I was in the middle part. I had a little bit more growth potential. He was actually 135 to 145 pounds at six foot one. Man, that is, N nothing against my thin guys, but man, that is a stream, man. man. You gotta be careful being blown in the wind with that kind of weight. Sheesh. At six foot one, yeah, that can make you a very lanky, awkward looking guy if you're not hitting those weights. Or should I say, getting that resistance in. So I started lifting in my garage because I wasn't confident enough to get in the gym and I made some decent progress in maybe a couple months, two, two three months. So he said what most of us go through at that age, what most of us go through when we first start lifting, we were caring about what everybody else thinks of us. And as you get older, as you get more into it, as you start to develop that confidence, a lot of that just becomes noise in the wind. You don't really care as much when that when you see people caring about how you look and what you're doing and lifting. As long as you're in the gym, not doing something crazy, jumping off the ceiling and stuff of that nature, you develop that confidence over time. But he said he worked out in his garage because he wasn't confident enough 
to do it himself. And that's something that a lot of people go through. I know that for a fact. And when I come with clients, they tell me that all the time. And this was about after a year of lifting with, on a bad diet. I was eating about 1500 calories a day. I was basically starving myself. And I felt completely fine, which is the crazy part. I, I was just never hungry. I never had an appetite. Past 40s, 150 to 155 pounds. This is after a year of bad dieting, he said. And if you can see on the picture, he clearly still has his abs too. So that tells you right there, the Hector Morris, man, they get away with murder when it comes to the way that you can eat, as long as you're putting it into your body. But there is optimal ways of doing it. There is ways you can do it, and then there's optimal ways that you wanna do it at the end of the day. And that's what's gonna get you the absolute best results when it comes down to it. So he says he was eating about 1,500 calories a day. That is starving yourself. So if you add that up, take the 1,500, then take the 300, 400 calories that you can burn in that workout. So now you're down to 1,100 or even 1,000 calories almost if you really push. So if you're only eating that much, you're only getting 1,000 calories, you're essentially in a starvation diet, man. It's, it's, it's 10, 12 year olds that get more calories than that. That's, that's not enough calories for a man who wants to put some muscle on, trust me. Because a lot of people will get to a certain set point. They've been eating that way for years and then they're just not hungry anymore. And it makes a lot of sense what he's saying here. But I don't think a lot of people realize how much they are eating that is junk, especially if you're eating late night, right? If you're eating late night and it's a high calorie meal, it'll transition to the next day. And if it transits to the next day, sometimes you wake up and you're not hungry and you still want to get into it. The motivation's overpowering your hunger. So you're essentially starving yourself and you're pushing as hard as you can, but you're not getting any real results. And that's what a lot of, um, I would say, hard gainers go through that they don't even realize that they do go through when they're doing it. Hey, coins you hit, I lost a bit of muscle again. Um, so I had to get back to working out in the garage and working out in the park, things like that. Just like so many others, he said quarantine hit. And what it did is it took him right out of the gym. And that's my biggest gripe when it comes to it too, is that it will take you out of the gym, man. It will take you out. It's people telling you that you can't come in because something happened. And so now what happens? They develop that habit of going to the gym. They develop nothing outside of the gym. Don't know anything that keeps them motivated outside of the gym. Don't have that why. Why? 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 And then you fall into the situation where you start to crash down, lose your momentum, lose weight, don't want to work out for months on end. It's, it's tough. It's a tough thing to go through. And then you shrink back down and then you lose that confidence that you had in the first place. And now you have to rebuild that again. This is why it's so important to get yourself into a habit of putting the discipline and accountability first because if you don't do that you're going to run into what this young man ran into but for a good i would say two and a half months i wasn't working out man that actually made me kind of depressed boom just like you said it made him depressed man it made him depressed because he had no other outlets that was his only outlet he, he lost his confidence everything so be very careful just like dedicating yourself to the gym like I said, I left the gym over six years ago, still making gains, still keeping up my diet, still vegan. Like, and I've, I've been on this. I've been on this. And there's no regret to that because I know that if I do step back in the gym with a buddy or something of that nature, I can perform the same way. I never, I never lost my gains. I never stopped. And so now I get to teach people or go into the gym and still show out when I go in the rare occasion that that is. It's only so much you can do without some resistance. And that's why I always tell people, get the bands, get something outside of it, even if it's not bands. Get something outside of the gym to keep you active, keep you healthy. It's, it's imperative that you do. But eventually, gym started opening back up. They have to work out in the park no more. I realized how little I was eating. So I was eating about 3,000 calories and I was seeing progress pretty quick. All my stats went up. I started feeling feeling stronger. Gym started opening back up, but one of the big things that he was missing, and what was that? The calories. He went from 1,500 calories to 2,800, up to 3,000 calories, up to 3,500 if I if I saw that right in the video, which is it's a huge surplus to start seeing it. And like I said, he was a thinner guy, so he kept his abs as he's bulking up. It, it's a, it's a win win situation when it comes down to that. So. He was able to get all of his stats up. All of his numbers went up, he said. All of his lifts, his confidence came back. It was pretty crazy.
people started noticing that I was working and now out. I weigh about 170 pounds. So it looks like he weighs about 170 pounds now. So look at that jump, man, from 135 to 170 pounds. That's not pure muscle. Let's, let's not get that confused. This is a natural lift thing. There's no pure muscle in that. But he was able to put on an, an excessive amount of weight. I would say out of that 135 up to 170, he might have put on him to 25 25 pounds of muscle and the, those newbie gains, I would say 20 to 25 pounds of muscle, very possible within the first two years. After three, four years, it starts to taper off, five, six, you're holding on to a thread, but you're not decreasing. You just you just increment up very slightly depending on how hard you push, but you gotta go in there with the same kind of effort, if not more, now that you're more experienced, more effort than you did in the first one, man. And that's the end of the video, guys. I want to go ahead and just show you that and show you what's possible as a natural lifter, man. Those newbie gains and stuff of that nature, it matters. It, it matters. Just got to know that it, it becomes a journey. Like, we race to those gains, but after that 15, 20 pounds of muscle, it's like, what do we do now? And like I told you before, like, if you see these pictures side to side, man, like, from this to this, I, was, I put a significant amount of muscle on. You can see it all in the chest, in the arms, and everything. And maybe I'm posing better too. At the end of the day, I went up from 165 pounds to 210 is what I currently weigh. I get as low as 205. My body fights me at that size. But I've been able to put on a significant amount of muscle throughout the entire body when it comes down to things of that nature. So it's all about effort. Uh, genetics matter. Not everybody's going to get the same results. So don't let these people try to trick you and say, oh, if you get on my program, you're going to get the best results. If you do this, you're going to get the best results. What they'll really be doing is sneaking stuff on you. Hey, man, uh, take this. Hey, man, uh, take that. Let's get some things. Then we can do some before and after pictures. Get you popping over here. I tell people, do not be fooled. The natural way is the best way. Creatine, protein powders, get your regular foods in. Um, you can take like multivitamins or just, just vitamins in general, good sleep and constant effort three to five times in the gym is what's going to get you the absolute best results. Okay. Thank you so much for tuning in. As I said before, like, comment, subscribe, man, share this video with your peoples. And if you have any natural friends out there thinking about jumping over, tell them, man, hey, go watch Kelvin, man. He, he, he talks the truth and he'll tell you what is capable if you go ahead and push. I also have training programs, meal plans, all of that, man. How do you think I keep these clients in shape? That's what I do. But at the end of it all, you guys have a great day. I appreciate you watching. It's not where you train. It's how you train. Go get those gains, people.